30 middle schoolers, a cramped little living room in the house of a seven-year-old woman who lets us borrow it on Wednesday nights. There I was giving a sermon to all these middle schoolers trying to transform their lives for the better, and I've done that time and time again, but this time I wanted to plan something a little bit different. See, up until that point, I've been giving messages that were typically the same, and typically followed the same pattern, the same tone, tone of voice. But that time I wanted to do something a little different, spice it up. So I thought, I'm gonna get loud. I'm gonna get real loud. So I planned a special moment in the sermon where I was going to get real loud, and I was going to talk about the death of the apostles as evidence for Christianity. So as I'm approaching this point, I'm preparing in my head, I'm saying a quick prayer, saying, God, please help me. I was nervous. I reached that point, and my voice started getting higher. And before I know it, I'm screaming at all of these 12, 15, and 14 year olds. <laughs> in their faces, I'm screaming, Judas died. He hung himself because he knew he had just betrayed the most important man in the world. Peter was hung upside down because he did not want to be crucified in the same fashion as his, as his Savior. And the only one who survived was John because he survived being thrown in a boiling pot of oil. And when they saw that he didn't die, they exiled him to an island so they could no longer speak the gospel. Sure enough, it got their attention. All of them were staring at me, and I didn't know what to do with all that power. So I just continued my message. And eventually I concluded the message, and it was over. About an hour after the night had totally finished, after small groups and all that, all the leaders typically get together at the end and have a meeting called the debrief. And in this debrief, my lead pastor there, his name is Matt Allman, he's there, he's telling us what went good through the night, what went bad, and before all that, we specifically talked about how my message went, how it can improve, and what was bad. Before, or as I'm walking, to go to the debrief meeting. I'm going to the couch, I'm about to sit down, and Matt is sitting right down there, and he says, bro, you're gonna be an amazing communicator. I took that to heart, my heart felt happy. I sat down, and we continued to talk, and he tells me all the things that I did well in my message, and then he tells me all the things that didn't grow so well, but all I really wanted to hear was how the loud part went. And as we get to that, he says, well, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. My heart dropped. All I wanted to hear was, it went great, Kendall. But after that, he continued to give me some advice of how I could be a better preacher and how I could communicate God's word, God's word in a better fashion because after all, he had been in ministry for about 15 years at that point. This person that I'm commemorating is Matt Allman. And today I'm commemorating him because he is direct, loving life. First of all, he is direct. See, when he was critiquing, critiquing my message, all I wanted to hear was the loud part was amazing. And he knew that I had planned that loud part, and he knew it was important to me. But rather than saying, hey, Kendall, that was amazing, and hiding what he really thought, he just straight out said, well, it wasn't terrible, as if to say, man, that wasn't you up there. All I wanted to hear was, it was great, but he told me what I needed to hear, and he told me because he wanted me to grow. My brother-in-law, uh, Michael Brummel, he is a pastor at Northside Church uh, up in North Park, and he has a master's in theology from Westminster uh, Seminary. He said, a mentor is not a good mentor if they don't knock it down a little bit. And that stuck with me, because he, Matt, had to knock me down just a little bit so I could keep growing, and he had my best in mind. He didn't hide it, he was direct to help me grow, straightforward and healthy. Also, Matt's loving. See, he had all of these thoughts in my mind, or in his mind, about what I could have done better, what was good, how the whole night as a whole could have went better, but instead, before I could even sit down, before he could dig in to what actually went wrong, to what actually went good, before he could dig into everything he had in his mind, he said, bro, you're gonna be a great communicator. I was just a little shot of love before he could get into everything. And when he said that, it rooted everything else he had to say, everything else, every critique, every negative thing, it rooted it in the foundation of love. Because before he said that, it rooted it 
in love. He laid the foundation of love so everything else would be built on top of that. And I knew that he had my best in mind and that he loved me. In John 15, 12, it says, uh, Jesus says, follow uh, this commandment, love each other, love one another as I, as I have loved you. And that was what directly came from Matt. That outward pouring out of love onto me before he could get into anything else to let me know that he wanted this to be a place of love and not critique. And lastly, Matt is wise. He's been doing ministry for about 15 years, and I've been doing ministry for about four months. And so he knows a lot more about student ministry, about middle school, about high school, about college, and about every ministry in most parts of life. He knows way more about that than I do. And so all the time, I always know when his advice is coming, he always starts it with, hey bro. He says, hey bro, it wasn't terrible, but hey bro, for that event coming up, you should do this, this, and this. And every time, it is such great advice. I always write it down, I always take note of it, and I always enact that advice. And every time, this is a quote by myself. Hey man, you're a pretty wise dude. <laughs> because he is, and it always works out. And he knows what he's doing, because he's been doing it for so long. And in conclusion, Matt Allman is a loving, wise, and direct man, and he continually demonstrates all of these virtues on a regular basis, which is why I'm commemorating him. Thank you. <laughs>